the Lord be with you. Good morning. We're going to offer this holy sacrifice of the Mass for the eternal rest of Thorsten and Mary Drake. I also want to pray for the spiritual and mental illness of Elias Ortega. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Judges. The Spirit of the Lord came upon Jephthah. He passed through Gilead and Manasseh, and through Mizpah and Gilead as well. And from there he went on to the Ammonites. Jephthah made a vow to the Lord. If you deliver the Ammonites into my power, he said, whoever comes out of the doors of my house to meet me when I return in triumph from the Ammonites shall belong to the Lord. I shall offer him as a burnt offering. Jephthah then went on to the Ammonites to fight against them, and the Lord delivered them into his power so that he inflicted a severe defeat on them. From the Aror to the approach of Minas, 20 cities in all, and as far as Abel Karamim. Thus was the Ammonites brought into subjection by the children of Israel. When Jephthah returned to his house in Mizpah, it was his daughter who came forth, playing the tambourines and dancing. She was an only child. He had neither son nor daughter besides her. When he saw her, he ran his garments and said, Alas, daughter, you have struck me down and brought calamity upon me. For I have made a vow to the Lord and I cannot retract. She replied, Father, you have made a vow to the Lord. Do with me as you have vowed. Because the Lord has wrought vengeance for you on your enemies, the Ammonites, then she said to her father, Let me have this favor. Spare me for two months, that I may go off down the mountains to mourn my virginity with my companions. Go, he replied, and he sent her away for two months. So she departed with her companions and mourned her virginity on the mountains. At the end of the two months, she returned to her father, who did to her as he had vowed, the word of the Lord. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Blessed the man who makes the Lord his trust, who turns not to idolatry or to those who stray after falsehood. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Sacrifice or oblation you wish not, but ears open to obedience you gave me. Burn offerings or sin offerings you sought not. Then said I, behold, I come. In the written scroll it is prescribed for me to do your will, O my God, 
is my delight, and your law is within my heart. I announce your justice in the vast assembly. I did not restrain my lips as you, O Lord, know. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Harden not your hearts. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus again in reply spoke to the chief priests and the elders of the people in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. He dispatched his servants to summon the invited guests to the feast, but they refused to come. A second time he sent other servants, saying, Tell those invited, Behold, I have prepared my banquet. My calves and fattened cattle are killed, and everything is ready. Come to the feast. Some ignored the invitation and went away, one to his farm, another to his business. The rest laid hold of his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged and sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then the king said to his servants, The feast is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy to come. Go out, therefore, into the main roads, and invite the feast whomever you find. The servants went out into the streets and gathered all they found, bad and good alike, and the hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to the but when the king came in to meet the, the guests, he saw a man there not dressed in a wedding garment. He said to him, My friend, how is it that you came in here without a wedding garment? But he was reduced to silence. Then the king said to his attendants, Bind his hands and feet, and cast him into the darkness outside, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Many are invited, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. The church has The church has always interpreted this passage of the gospel as the Eucharist. The Lord invites us to the Eucharist, to the celebration of the holy sacrifice of Christ. Why? Because we have to feed our souls. We need eternal life. And the Lord provides us for that eternal life through the sacraments. We come here to feed our souls by hearing the word of God, and also by eating the very blood and flesh and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. We need God. We need to feed our souls because we were created for eternal life. Many people refuse to come to receive the grace that comes from the Eucharist. And they have got many excuses, especially today, for not coming to Mass. The pandemic, for many people, has just become an an excuse to not coming to Mass and to excuse their laziness, to excuse the lack of faith they have. I'm not referring to those people who are willing to come, who, who really want to come, 
but they can't for serious reasons, for legitimate reasons. But there are so, so many that since the, the pandemic started, the pandemic has become the great excuse they were looking for as not to come to mass and to do extra things that they wanted to do, entertainment and other stuff. The Lord invites us. And those who do not come, the Lord says, they, did not, they do not come because they are not worthy to come. These hearts are hard words, very hard words, said by the Lord. Those who refuse to come to the Eucharist, even to the daily Eucharist, because they can come, or they refuse to come to the Sunday Mass, the Lord says they are not worthy to come, and they will not enjoy the graces that we receive at, the, at this Eucharist. They are invited, but they have refused. It is not that the Lord doesn't want them to come. They have refused to come. This is the fact. Now we have to be prepared to receive these graces, especially the body and blood of Christ. We have to wear the wedding garment. We cannot receive the Holy Eucharist immortal sin. It is a grave sin that we receive the Eucharist in grave sin, in serious sin, in a state of mortal sin, because then we will just worsen our state of our, the, the state of our souls by committing another sin, which is a profanation, which is a sacrilege, a sacrilege, sacrilege. Let us prepare ourselves to receive the body and blood of Christ. We need him because we were made for him, and without him, we cannot have the strength to face our daily crosses, to bear our daily struggles. We need him, not only for for, for our lifetime on earth, but we need him to be prepared to pass from death to life when our hour comes, to pass from this world, to see him face to face after we have endured the judgment and the sentence for our good deeds and bad deeds. Let us pray in silence. Let us pray, brothers and sisters, for the church and the world. We pray that the Holy Spirit of the Lord may come upon our holy ministers and shepherds in the church. We pray for Pope Francis that they may inflict a great defeat upon the power of evil in our own days. Let us pray to the Lord. That the prophetic voices who take the part of justice, morality, and peace may be heard and heeded in our world today. We pray for the end of abortion. Let us pray to the Lord. That we may be among the chosen who willingly leave everything behind when we are summoned to the wedding banquet of the heavenly king. We pray especially for those who refuse to come to mass because when we refuse to come to at least a Sunday mass every week, we're refusing to enter the kingdom of heaven because Christ himself has established the Eucharist as the way for us to enter into his kingdom. As blessed Carlo Acuti said, the Eucharist is my highway to heaven. Let us pray for those who lack of faith that God may give them the gift of repentance, conversion, and embrace the invitation to receive the holy body and blood of Christ in this Holy Eucharist, let us pray to the Lord. 
for all the intentions recommended to our prayers, for all the needs we bring in our hearts to this Eucharist. We pray especially for the sake of, of this parish community, for Elias Ortega, for those who have lost a loved one, that the master of the wedding banquet may be gracious to us all. Let us pray to the Lord. That those who have gone before us in death, we pray especially for Thurston and Mary Drake and also Christine, that they may come before God dressed in the wedding garment of his grace and favor. Let us pray to the Lord. God of heaven and earth, listen graciously to the prayers that we humbly present to you, trusting in your divine mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you through the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you for the divine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation, through Christ our Lord. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and given thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more given thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have those worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Nelson, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you through all the ages, we remember to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray the healing work of your mercy and graciously perfect and sustain us so that in all things we may please you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of our death. Amen.